Chapter 2, Lesson 4, Solving Equations with Variables on Each Side. And we are going to use um, variables on each side, and we're going to use very, uh, equations with grouping symbols. Um, we do have some new vocabulary, it says, identity, but we've actually already defined that. So it's not actually new vocabulary, it's review. And so let's work on solving an equation with variables on both sides. So what we're going to do is we are going to move um, terms using addition and subtraction. So we get the variable on one side and the number on the other. And the biggest mistake that I see people make when they do this is they move everything to the same side. You can't move everything to the same side. Think of the variable like oil and the number like water and they don't go together, they split. So we're going to use addition and subtraction to get them separated and then we'll use multiplication or division to isolate the variable completely. Uh, we want him in solitary. So there are two ways to approach this. So method one is to use addition and subtraction. And then method two is to move and change the sign. And I will explain each of these as we go. So I'm going to use the same example problem for both. And that first problem is 2 plus 5k is equal to 3k minus 6. All right, method 1 uses addition and subtraction. Now I want all of my variables on the same side. I have a choice. I can either move all the k's to the right or I can move all the k's to the left. It doesn't matter which. I normally choose the one that will give me a positive number, and in this case, taking 3 away from both sides, because if I subtract 3 from 5, I get a positive 2. So that makes 3k go away, which gives me 2 plus 2k equals negative 6. Now the other method is to pick up thing we want to move and just move it. But if we change sides, we change signs. Think about it as if you're switching teams. If you switch teams, they make you put on a different jersey, right? We don't wear the same color jersey if we go on a new team. So changing the side is what changes the sign. Oops. So that's 5k minus 3k minus 6, and then 5k minus 3k is 2k, sorry, equals negative 6. So as you can see, we end up with the same result. Now, I don't want to add 6 to both sides because that will leave me nothing over here. I need to now go away from the k. I got all the k's together, and now I need to get the numbers away from the k. So first, get the variable together. Then get everything away from the variable. So I need to get rid of this too. I want to get away from k. So it's positive, so I need to subtract 2 from both sides. And that leaves me 2k is equal to negative 8. Using the other method, I can pick it up and move it over here, which makes it negative. So I get 2k is equal to negative 8. Then finally, I want the k completely alone. So I divide both sides by 2 to get that k is equal to negative 4. 
And that step is the same for both methods. Now I will probably interchange back and forth between these two as we go through the lesson rather than doing them both. But pick the method that you like the best. This one is more traditional. But method two makes more sense for some people. So pick the method that makes the most sense for you. Let's do another example. 3w plus 2 equals 7w. Sometimes I don't have a, chain, a choice as to which side I move the variable to. As you can see, I don't have anything other than a variable over here. So if I were to take the 7w away, that leaves me nothing on this side of the equation. I can't have that. I need to keep my equation essentially balanced. So I'm going to take the 3w away from both sides. Plus that keeps me with my positive 7. So I have 4w. And then I need to divide by 4. So w, 2 over 4 reduces to 1 half. So w equals 1 half. Now, I just want to show you a what if. What if I did subtract 7w from both sides? That will leave me with a negative 4w plus 2 equals 0. Make sure if you subtract from 7w from 7w and there's nothing else over there, it equals 0. This is not negative 4w equals 2. No. Okay? The equal sign can't just suddenly move. If you do this, you have to make that equal to 0. And then we subtract the 2 from both sides, which will give us that negative 4w equals negative 2. And then we will divide by negative 4, which will give us that w equals 1 half. So you, you can move everything to the right variable-wise, but remember, if there's nothing else over here, it equals 0, not 2, 0. Okay, so be very careful when you're moving things from side to side that if you get rid of everything on one side of the equal sign, you replace it with a 0 because that's what happens when I subtract 3w from both sides over here. My next line is actually 0 plus 2 equals 4w. We just don't write that in because 0 plus 2 is itself. So just make sure you write in the zeros if you, if you do that. Let's do another example. Um, 5a plus 2 is equal to 6 minus 7a. And I am going to use the pick it up and move it method this time. I'm going to pick up this 7a and I'm going to move it over here where it's going to become positive 7a. Like that. So 7a plus 5a is 12a plus 2 equals 6. And then I'm going to pick up this positive 2 and I'm going to move it over here where it's going to become a negative 2, giving me 12a equals 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And this is going to reduce 12 and 4 both divide by 4. So that will give me 1 third. Let's do another. We have x divided by 2 plus 1 is equal to 1 fourth x minus 6. Now, I'm actually going to rewrite that lower because we have a couple ways we can deal with this. I know that the majority of my students hate fractions. Now, there are a few of you that don't mind fractions, but I know the majority of you hate fractions. So I'm going to work this problem out twice, once with the fractions and once without. With the fractions, I want to get this 1 fourth x away. So I'm going to take 1 fourth x away from both sides. Now, x over 2 
is the same thing as 1 half x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 half x. Then I need a common denominator. So I'm actually going to rewrite it again as 2 fourths x. And 2 fourths minus 1 fourth is 1 fourth x. Now I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. And that's going to give me that 1 fourth x is equal to negative 7. Then I'm going to multiply both sides by 4, giving me that x is negative 28. And that's how we deal with it if we keep the fractions in. Remember that any time we have a fraction where we have a variable over a number, that's the same thing as 1 over that number times the variable. So x over 5 is the same as 1 fifth x, x over 9 is the same as 1 ninth x, etc. So that's just a little note. Now, for those of you that are fraction phobic, we can do what's called clearing the fractions. Okay, let me move that, that's too close. So we can clear the fractions. And clearing the fractions involves multiplying the entire equation by the common denominator. I can't spell denominator right now. Denominator. Okay. So what we do is we look at our fractions. I have a 2 and a 4, so my common denominator is 4. So I will then have 4 times x over 2, 4 times 1, 4 times 1 fourth x, and 4 times 6. You have to multiply every single term by 4. So make sure you multiply everything by 4. 2 goes into 4 two times, and 4 goes into 4 one time. And now I have 2x. 2 times x is 2x. 4 times 1 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. And 4 times 6 is 24. And now I have an equation I can solve with absolutely no fractions in it. I want to get my x's together, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. 2 minus 1 is 1, so x plus 4 equals negative 24. Then I need to get this 4 away from the x, so I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, giving me x equals negative 28. So as you can see, we get the exact same answer, but we've gotten rid of our fractions. And we will run into that quite a few times. So if you have questions, just let me know. All right, next example has decimals. 1.3c equals 3.3c plus 28. And we can work with the decimals or we can get rid of them. Working with the decimals, I'm going to move everything over here because there's only C's on this side, so I want to move all my C's together. So 1.3 minus 3.3 is negative 2C. Is equal, oh, sorry, that's not 28, that's 2.8. Negative 2C is equal to 2.8. Divide by negative 2. And C is equal to negative 1.4. If you don't like working with decimals, you can clear the decimals. Um, what you do is you look at how many decimal places you have. And since I have one decimal place, I'm going to multiply by 10. If I have one decimal place, I will multiply by 100. If I have two decimal places, by 1,000 if I have three etc. So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 10, which means I multiply every single term by 10. And why do I do that? Because multiplying by 10 moves the decimal place 
So I get 13C is equal to 33C plus 28. I subtract 33 from both sides. Sorry, 33C. And I get negative 20C is equal to 28. I divide both sides by negative 20. And C is equal to, if I leave it in a fraction format, I just have to reduce it. And they both divide by 2, giving me 14 over 10. And then that divides by 2, giving me 7 fifths. So I can have negative 7 fifths. Or if I work out the decimal, that's negative 1.4. Okay, so that's variables on both sides. Now we also have equations with grouping symbols. All right, so equations with grouping symbols have parentheses, brackets, braces, fraction bars, things of that nature. And when we have grouping symbols, our first step is going to be to distribute. Our second step will be to collect like terms on either side. And both of these steps are if necessary. Because sometimes we don't have to distribute and sometimes we don't have to collect like terms because there aren't any. Then we add or subtract to isolate the variable term. And then we multiply or divide to isolate the variable itself. So my first step is to distribute. So I'm going to distribute this 6, and I'm going to distribute the 1 third. Now before you freak out about the 1 third, we'll work on that. There's no point in clearing this fraction. I'll show you why. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 3 is negative 18. Now I'm going to actually write these out. 1 third times 24, and 1 third times 12. And the reason I did this is because 3 goes into 24 eight times, and 3 goes into 12 four times. So I get 30m minus 18 is equal to 8m plus 4. So you can see why I said there was no point in clearing that fraction. If these numbers will divide by this number, it's easy. You don't have to clear the fraction. You just divide them, and then 1 times 8, 1 times 4. Now I'm going to add or subtract to isolate my variable terms. I want to get all my variables to the same side. So I'm going to subtract 8m because that's going to give me the positive variable that I like to have whenever possible. And then I'm trying to get away from the m, so I'm going to add 18 to both sides, giving me 22m equals 22. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 22 to get that m completely alone. And m equals 1. Let's do another one. Okay. 8s minus 10 equals 3 times 6 minus 2s. I have some distribution on this side. So I will go ahead and do my distribution. 8s minus 10 is equal to 18 minus 6s. And then I want to move all of my variables to the same side. So I'm going to add 6s to both sides. And I will get 14s minus 10 is equal to 18. I want my s alone. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides to get rid of that. And so I'll get 14s is equal to 28. And I still want to get that S completely alone, so I divide both sides by 14, and S is equal to 2. All right, let's do one more example with parentheses. OK, 
Okay, I have distribution on both sides. I'm going to distribute this 7, and I'm going to distribute this negative 2. Now remember, I have to multiply both numbers by the negative, not just by 2. So I have 7n minus 7 is equal to negative 6 minus 2n. I'm going to add 2n to both sides because that is going to cancel this one out. So I have 9n minus 7 is equal to negative 6. And I'm going to add 7 because I'm trying to get away from the n. Now that I've gotten them to both sides, which gives me 9n equals 1. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 9. And some people are very tempted at this point to enter that into the calculator. And I say, why? The answer is right there, 1 ninth. You don't have to give me a decimal answer. Just write down exactly what you see here. Give me the fraction. Fractions are great. You may not think so, but I do. Okay. The next thing we have are special solutions, okay? And we talked earlier in a previous section about an identity. An identity is an equation that is true for all real numbers. Okay, so special solutions, one of the possibilities is an identity, and the other possibility is no solutions. So we have no solutions, or we have all real numbers. And we can symbolize no solutions with the symbol for the null set or the empty set, and all real numbers with the symbol for our real numbers. So let's look at this and we'll do an example for what that looks like. 5x plus 5 is equal to 3 times 5x minus 4 minus 10x. So I have some distribution first. So I'm going to distribute that. 5x plus 5 is equal to 15x minus 12 minus 10x. Before I start moving things around, I have to collect my like terms. So 5x plus 5 is equal to 15 minus 10 is 5x minus 12. And then I'm going to move my 5x's. So move this one over. And those also cancel out, so I get 5 equals negative 12. 5 equals negative 12. No, it doesn't. So this statement is false. Whenever I get a false statement, I have no solutions. And again, you can just write that symbol if you'd like to. So if you get a false statement, some number equals some other number, not true, no solutions. So let's look at the other scenario. And I have 3 times 2b minus 1 minus 7 is equal to 6b minus 10. So I first distribute. 6b minus 1 minus 7 is equal to 6b minus 10, not minus 1, sorry, minus 3. Collect like terms. 6b minus 10 is equal to 6b minus 10. And as you can see, I have a reflexive situation happening here, but I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. I'm going to subtract 6b from both sides to cancel those out. And I get that negative 10 equals negative 10. Yep, it sure does. And when I get a true statement, I get all real numbers. Or again, you can use the symbol for all reals. If you get the number equals to itself, it's true, you get all real numbers. Let's look at two more examples of this. Okay, 7x plus 5 times x minus 1 equals negative 5 plus 12x. That's one example. 
6 times y minus 5 is equal to 2 times 10 plus 3y is my other example. Distribute in my 5 first. 7x plus 5x minus 5 is equal to negative 5 plus 12x. 7x plus 5x is 12x minus 5 is equal to my negative 5 plus 12x. I'm going to subtract 12x from both sides. Initially to cancel those out, but it also cancels these out. Then I get negative 5 is equal to negative 5. This is true, so my solution is all reals. My next example, I'm going to multiply by 6 and by 2. 6y minus 30 is equal to 30 plus 6y. Subtract 6y from both sides, and I get negative 30 equals 30. Now be very careful of your signs. This is false because one of these is negative, and so I have no solutions. So let's recap the steps for solving equations so far. Step one, distribute if necessary. Sometimes we don't have distribution. Step two, collect like terms on either side of the equal. Before we even move anything from one side to the other, we want to make sure everything's collected on one side. Step three, use addition and subtraction to move the variable terms to one side and the numbers to the other. And then finally, we're going to use multiplication and division to get the variable completely alone. In case we want, you know, like letter equals number. Okay. Solving problems. All right. So we are given a picture and I'm going to draw it probably pretty poorly, but we're given a box or square. And we have a 10 centimeter and we have X centimeters. And then we are given another rectangle. I guess this is probably a rectangle also, where this is six centimeters. This part is X centimeters and this part is three centimeters. And we want the areas to be equal. Find X. Okay. If this side has a 3 centimeter part and an X centimeter part, all together it is X plus 3. And the area of rectangle 1, remember area is length times width, so the area of rectangle 1 is 10 times X, which is 10X. And we want that to equal the area of rectangle 2, which is 6 times x plus 3, which is 6x plus 18. So 10x needs to equal 6x plus 18. I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. 4x equals 18. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and x is going to equal 4.5, or 4.5. Okay, we're going to do one more like this. So at this time, we're going to do perimeter. And so again, I'm given two rectangles. 
one that has a length of 6 and x. The other one that has a 2x plus 2 and an x. And I want them to be the same. <clears throat> so, if this is x and this is 6, then this is x and this is 6. And if this is x, then this is x. And if this is 2x plus 2, then this is 2x plus 2. And the perimeter of my first rectangle is 6 plus 6 plus x plus x, which is equal to 2x plus 12. And my perimeter of my second rectangle is x plus x plus 2x plus 2 plus 2x plus 2. That's all my four sides. So I have 1, 2, 4, 6x's plus 4. So 2x plus 12 needs to equal 6x plus 4. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides because, like I said, I like my x's to stay positive, but it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I'm going to move this up a little bit. So I will have 8 equals 4x. Divide both sides by 4. And x is 2. Okay, so now we're going to move on to reviewing what you should have gotten from your note-taking assignment. And that will be the end of Lesson 3 from Chapter 2. Real quickly, I lied. It's not Lesson 2.3. It's Lesson 2.4. And I wanted to go over how to use algebra tiles to solve this. So next up is algebra tiles. Then note-taking. Okay, while it's not part of this chapter, since we've been working with algebra tiles, I wanted to show you how to solve um, an equation with variables on both sides using our algebra tiles. And the first example in the book was 2 plus 5k is equal to 3k minus 6. So, I'm going to set that up. I have my 2 plus 5k. So 2 plus 5k is equal to 3k minus 6. So remember our negatives are orange. So I have 6 minus 6. So here's 2 plus 5k and here's 3k minus 6. I'm just going to draw a line down to represent our equal sign. Now I want all of my variables on the same side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel out these three. And since I canceled out three on this side, I have to cancel out three on this side, which makes this go away, which means I now have 2 plus 2k equals negative 6. And I want my x's alone, well in this case my k's, alone on this side. <clears throat> so I'm going to cancel those two out by adding two negatives over here. And since I put two negatives on this side, I need to also put two negatives on this side, which cancels these out, so I can take those away. And now you can see that I have two k's equal negative 8, and if I group them, each k is equal to negative 4. So there's my solution, k equals negative 4. Let's try another one using our algebra tiles. Of course, make this line a little darker so we can see it better. That represents our equal sign. And 
the one we're going to do now is 5a plus 2 equals 6 minus 7a. So I have 5a plus 2 equals 6 minus 7a. Okay, so 5a's, so I have to put 5 rectangles, plus 2, can you see the bottom? No, of course not. So there's 5 rectangles plus 2 is equal to 6. And then I have minus 7a, which means I'm now going to have my negative variables. So I have seven of those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, of course, ideally, we want to keep them spaced out so we can see them, but my video camera will not zoom out that far, so I need to keep them kind of crunched. So I want all of my variables on one side, and since I want my variables to be positive, I'm going to cancel out my negative variables by putting seven positives on top of them, which means I have to put seven over here as well. Okay, so I have seven and seven, which cancels out these negatives and positives. So now on this side, I have 12, 12 positives, so 12a plus 2 is equal to 6, and I need to get rid of this plus 2, so I'm going to take 2 away from here, which means I'm also going to take 2 away from here, so those will cancel out, and now I have 12 of these. equal to four of these. So this one is going to give me a fractional answer. Four divided by twelve, which means that each A is going to be worth one third of a square. And here's how I can symbolize that is I can take and break this into four groups with three each, and so each one of these groups will go with one tile, meaning that three rectangles would equal one square. So one square goes to one third for each rectangle. Okay, so that's just a little quick using the algebra tiles when you have equations on both sides. When we have equations with grouping symbols, we can still use the algebra tiles, but we have to do the distribution by hand first. Um, so let us try one of the examples that was given. 8s minus 10 is equal to 3 times 6 minus 2s. And that works out okay but we need to first do this distribution. So I need to distribute the 3 first. 8s minus 10 equals 18 minus 6s. And so then, after I've done the distribution, I can set up my tiles. I have 8s's. And then uh, 10 negatives. So I'm going to go ahead and stack these for right now, just to save room. I'm going to have 10 negatives, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Okay, and then that is equal to 18, so I have 18 positives. That's 
11, 15, 16, 17, 18 positives, minus 6. Now I know these aren't organized as well as they should be, but it's the best I can do with the space that I have. I need to cancel out these six negative S's. So to do that, I'm going to add six positives. And I'm adding six positives to the other side as well to keep it balanced. And that makes all of these go away. And I now have 14 S's over here, 18 singles, and I have a minus 10. So to get rid of my minus 10, I need to cancel those out. So I add 10 positives there, which means I have to add 10 positives over here. Okay. Now all of these canceled each other out. Now I just need to sort this in some way that makes sense. So and what I think I'm actually going to do is I am going to go off camera. So I apologize for that, but the only way I'm going to be able to make any sense of this. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 S's. And then over here I have 28 singles. So I'm going to just start putting them down in rows of 7 because I have 7 double rows of S's. Okay, so now I can see that every two X's is equal to four tiles. So if I split them off, I can see that one X is equal to two tiles. So X equals two is my answer. Okay, this is the note taking for chapter two, lesson four. And we're gonna look at the two things we're gonna learn. Um, we are going to learn how to solve an equation with variables on each side. And we're going to learn how to solve an equation involving grouping symbols. So that's that first section. Sorry, I'll zoom in. Okay, the next thing we have is vocabulary. We need to match each term to its definition. Um, equations that have the same solution are equivalent equations. Okay. An equation that requires one more than one step to solve is a multi-step equation. I'm putting EQN for equation. Um, integers in counting order are consecutive integers. Okay. A study of numbers and the relationships between them is number theory. A rule for the relationship between certain quantities is a formula. And finding the value of a variable that makes an equation true is solving an equation. Okay, we want to define the word identity in our own words. And if we look in the book, identity is equations that are true 
for all values of the variable. So these are infinite solution equations. And we've looked up identity in the dictionary before. We're going to look it up again. And it is the condition or fact of being exactly the same or alike. Um, and then actually they actually have the math definition. Definition 3 is the math definition which gives us this definition here. Um, how that will help us be used in everyday or how this definition will help us with math is that both sides of the equations are equal. Okay, our next section says to complete the flow chart to describe the steps. So the first thing we're going to use is the distributive property. And that is going to give us 14x minus 21 is equal to 12x minus 5. Then we are going to subtract 12x from each side and simplify. So subtracting 12x from each side gives us 2x minus 21 equals negative 5. Then we're going to add 21 to each side, because again we're trying to get away from the variable, giving us that 2x equals 16. And then we're going to divide each side by 2, giving us that x equals 8. And here we have another equation to solve. I need to distribute the 3, and that gives me 6y plus 4 is equal to 6y minus 10. I subtract 6y from both sides giving me that 4 equals negative 10, which is false. That means there are no solutions. Okay. And then finally we have, in addition to the examples in this section of chapter 2, there's other occurrences and no solutions, as well as identities, which is all real numbers, where there are endless possibilities of solutions. So what are the symbols for these? The symbol for no solutions is either the symbol for an empty set or an actual empty set. And the symbol for all solutions is all real numbers.